I'm State Representative April Berg, proud to represent the 44th Legislative District. Mark Cody, Executive Director of Parkview Services. Next session, the legislature is really excited to keep tackling the issue of having more affordable housing. I say excited because I am going to reintroduce a bill that I introduced last session for a real estate transfer tax that will provide a dedicated revenue source for affordable housing. It's dedicated and it's specific. It'll help communities across our state, especially our IDD community, find affordable housing and providers like you build affordable housing. Talk to me a little bit about that pipeline. So what projects do you have coming up and what can we can expect to see from Parkview? So we do have uh, a bunch of projects that got funded in 2022 that we're developing now. We have, uh, uh, I think it was close to $11 million in uh, public funding awards to develop um, five projects mm -hmm. um, in Pierce and King and Snohomish counties. Um, and one that I'm excited about was a, a, um, a pilot project to develop a detached accessory dwelling unit in, yeah. in Seattle. One of the things was this particular uh, tenant lost his community-based placement because he was in a big multifamily mm -hmm. um, project, I mean, uh, rental. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a challenging behaviors that caused a lot mm -hmm. of disruption mm -hmm. there. And he was asked yeah. to leave because of that disruption. And so with in, in this unit, it's just him. Mm -hmm. He has his own space. Mm -hmm. It's a fenced in property. We're hoping we have like 15 properties in the city of Seattle. So we're uh, one of the projects that we're working on is to add accessory dwelling units. So we're hoping to go in and get public funds to do, to do that. So yeah. we just went to a ribbon cutting at a project in Tukwila, mm -hmm. um, where we partnered with Homestead Community and Land Trust, a, mm -hmm. a home ownership developer. They develop homes. So we we started uh, talking in 2016 and uh, with with Homestead, and they donated two parcels to Parkview mm -hmm. from uh, two of 18 parcels. Mm -hmm. We developed two single families ground level four bedroom homes that are net zero. The tenants are starting to move in. Mm -hmm. And we had a uh, ribbon cutting last uh, Friday mm -hmm. and our tenant, Lindsay, cut the ribbon. Talk about pride and yeah. ownership and, and having that there. And so, then also just kind of that mixed use within community. Right? right. So you've got those two properties in community that has exactly. a lot of diversity of families. And that to me is one of the best ways to build community is to have folks integrated together and not just kind of um, siloed off. But one thing I want to emphasize is the partnership that, because mm -hmm. this is a multifamily rental developer partnering with a home ownership developer mm -hmm. on the same development. Yeah. Um, and we could leverage different funds. There, there is an issue that's been burgeoning uh, mm -hmm. in Washington State, it's actually all, all over Everywhere. the country, where it's aging parents who have been taking care of their a son or daughter with who, who's a person with IDDs, and they don't have a plan for what happens when they pass. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of folks in that uh, situation that are going to need housing and support services. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for bringing up that, that silver tsunami. I think in every aspect of my life as a policymaker, mm. uh, it's probably one of the things people like to least talk about mm. is the, um, the onslaught of, as we have more folks aging, we need different services, different housing opportunities, and of course, different um, concern for the legacy that they're leaving behind, including the children that they may be taking care of. So thank you for, for making that a part of your formula. What you can do as a community to support IDD housing is showing up, testifying for bills, writing legislators, um, and, and showing up the town halls as well. Talking to them about a dedicated revenue source for housing, talking about the impacts to the IDD community, those stories go so long um, or go a long way. The other thing is once those bills are written and once we drop them in session, coming and showing up and testifying as well as meeting with your legislator. Um, I serve the 44th Legislative District. I love talking to con constituents who have issues and they, they want my help with affordable housing. Every single district across our state has constituents just as passionate. So showing up makes a really big difference.